back to my channel. We're back today to continue reading Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. We're reading chapter 18 now, so we're going to be reading chapter 18 in this video. If you have a copy of the book, please read along with me. If you're just here to listen to me read, then I hope this is a good reading experience for us both. So let's read together chapter 18. Since Tea Cake and Janie had friended with the Bahaman workers in the glades, they, the saws, had been gradually drawn into the American crowd. They quit hiding out to hold their dances when they found that their American friends didn't laugh at them as they feared. Many of the Americans learned to jump and liked it as much as the saws. So they began to hold dances night after night in the quarters, usually behind Tea Cake's house. Often now, Tea Cake and Janie stayed up so late at the fire dances that Tea Cake would not let her go with him to the field. He wanted her to get her rest. So she was home by herself one afternoon when she saw a band of Seminoles passing by. The men walking in front and the laden, stolid women following them like burros. She had seen Indians several times in the glades, in twos and threes, but this was a large party. They were headed toward the Palm Beach Road and kept moving steadily. About an hour later, another party appeared and went the same way. Then another, just before sundown. This time she asked where they were all going, and at last one of the men answered her. Going to high ground, saw grass bloom, hurricane coming. Everybody was talking about it that night, but nobody was worried. The fire dance kept up till nearly dawn. The next day, more Indians moved east, unhurried but steady. Still a blue sky and fair weather. Beans running fine and prices good. So the Indians could be, must be wrong. You couldn't have a hurricane when you're making seven or eight dollars a day picking beans. Indians are dumb anyhow, always were. Another night of stew beef making dynamic subtleties with his drum and living sculptural grotesques in the dance. Next day, no Indians passed at all. It was hot and sultry and Janie left the field and went home. Morning came without motion. The winds to the tiniest lisping baby breath had left the earth. Even before the sun gave light, dead day was creeping from bush to bush watching man. Some rabbits scurried through the quarters going east. Some possums slunk by and their route was definite, one or two at a time, then more. By the time the people left the fields, the procession was constant. Snakes, rattlesnakes, began to cross the quarters. The men killed a few, but they could not be missed from the crawling horde. People stayed indoors until daylight. Several times during the night, Janie heard the snort of big animals like deer. Once, the muted voice of a panther, going east and east. That night, the palm and banana trees began that long distance talk with rain. Several people took fright and picked up and went into Palm Beach anyway. A thousand buzzards held a flying meat and then went above the clouds and stayed. One of the Bahaman boys stopped by Tea Cake's house in a car and hollered. Tea Cake came out, throwing laughter over his shoulder into the house. Hello, Tea Cake. Hello, Elias. You leave in, I see. Yeah, man, you and Janie want to go? I wouldn't give nobody else a chance at a seat till I found out if y'all had any way to go. Thank you ever so much, Lias. But we both decided to stay. The crow gone up, man. That ain't nothing. You ain't see the boss man go up, is you? Well, all right now. Man, the money's too good on the muck. It's liable to fare off by tomorrow. I wouldn't leave if I was you. My uncle come for me. He's a hurricane warning out in Palm Beach. Not so bad, dear. But man, this muck is too low and that big lake is liable to bust. Ah, uh, no, man. Some boys in there now talking about it. Some of them been in the glades for years. Tain't nothing but a little blow. You'll lose the whole day tomorrow trying to get back out here. The Indians gone east, man. It's dangerous. They don't always know. Indians don't know much of nothing to tell the truth. Else they'd own this country still. The white folks ain't gone nowhere. They ought to know if it's dangerous. You better stay here, man. Big jumping dance tonight right here when it fair off. Lias hesitated and started to climb out, but his uncle wouldn't let him. This time tomorrow you're going to wish you follow crow, he snorted and drove off. Lias waved back to them gaily. 
if I never see you no more on earth, I'll meet you in Africa. Others hurried east, like the Indians and rabbits and snakes and coons. But the majority sat around laughing and waiting for the sun to get friendly again. Several men collected at Tea Cake's house and sat around stuffing courage into each other's ears. Janie baked a big pan of beans and something she called sweet biscuits, and they all managed to be happy enough. Most of the great flamethrowers were there, and naturally handling Big John the Conqueror and his works. How he had done everything big on earth, then went up to heaven without dying at all. Went up there picking a guitar and got all the angels doing the ring shout round and round the throne. Then everybody but God and old Peter flew off on a flying race to Jericho and back. And John the Conqueror won the race, went on down to hell, beat the old devil and passed out ice water to everybody down there. Somebody tried to say that it was a mouth organ harp that John was playing. But the rest of them would not hear that. Don't care how good anybody could play a harp, God would rather to hear a guitar. That brought them back to tea cake. How come he couldn't hit that box of liquor too? Well, all right now, make us know it. When it got good to everybody, Muck Boy woke up and began to chant with the rhythm and everybody bore down on the last word of the line. Your mama don't wear no drawers. I seen her when she took them off. She soaked them in alcohol. She sold them to the Santa Claus. He told her it was against the law to wear them dirty drawers. <laughs> then Muck Boy went crazy through the feet and danced himself and everybody else crazy. When he finished, he sat back down on the floor and went to sleep again. Then they got to playing Florida Flip and Coon Can. Then it was dice, not for money. This was a show-off game. Everybody posing his fancy shots. As always, it broiled down to Tea Cake and Motorboat. Tea Cake with his shy grin and Motorboat with his face like a little black cherubim just from a church tower doing amazing things with anybody's dice. The others forgot the work and the weather watching them throw. It was art. A thousand dollars a throw in Madison Square Garden wouldn't have gotten any more breathless suspense. It would have just been more people holding in. After a while, somebody looked out and said, It ain't getting no fairer out there. Believe I'll get on over to Mashak. Motorboat and Tea Cake were still playing, so everybody left them at it. Sometime that night, the winds came back. Everything in the world had a strong rattle, sharp and short like stew beef vibrating the drumhead near the edge with his fingers. By morning, Gabriel was playing the deep tones in the center of the drum. So when Janie looked out of her door, she saw the drifting mists gathered in the west, that cloud field of the sky, to arm themselves with thunders and march forth against the world. Louder and higher and lower and wider, the sound and motion spread, mounting, sinking, darking. It woke up old Okeechobee and the monster began to roll in his bed, began to roll and complain like a peevish world on a grumble. The folks in the quarters and the people in the big houses further around the shore heard the big lake and wondered. The people felt uncomfortable but safe because there were the sea walls to chain the senseless monster in his bed. The folks let the people do the thinking. If the castles thought themselves secure, the cabins needn't worry. Their decision was already made as always. Chink up your cracks, shiver in your wet beds, and wait on the mercy of the Lord. The boss man might have the thing stopped before morning anyway. It is so easy to be hopeful in the daytime when you can see the things you wish on. But it was night. It stayed night. Night was striding across nothingness with the whole round world in his hands. A big burst of thunder and lightning that trampled over the roof of the house. So Tea Cake and Motor stopped playing. Motor looked up in his angel-looking way and said, Big Massa, draw him chair upstairs. I'm glad y'all stopped that crap shooting, even if it wasn't for money, Janie said. Old Massa is doing his work now. Us ought to keep quiet. They huddled closer and stared at the door. They just didn't use another part of their bodies, and they didn't look at anything but the door. The time was passed for asking the white folks what to look for through that door. Six eyes were questioning God. 
Through the screaming wind, they heard things crashing and things hurtling and dashing with unbelievable velocity. A baby rabbit, terror-ridden, squirmed through a hole in the floor and squatted off there in the shadows against the wall, seeming to know that nobody wanted its flesh at such a time. And the lake got madder and madder with only its dikes between them and him. In a little wind lull, Tea Cake touched Janie and said, I reckon you wish now you had have stayed in your big house way from such as this, don't you? No. No. Yeah, no. People don't die till daytime come no how. Don't care where you at. I'm with my husband in a storm, that's all. Thank you, ma'am. But supposing you was to die now, you wouldn't get mad at me for dragging you here? No. We've been together around two years. If you can see the light at daybreak, you don't care if you die at dusk. It's so many people never seen the light at all. I was fumbling round and God opened the door. He dropped to the floor and put his head in her lap. Well then, Janie, you meant what you didn't say because I never knowed you were so satisfied with me like that. I kind of thought. The wind came back with triple fury and put out the light for the last time. They sat in company with the others in other shanties their eyes straining against crude walls and their souls asking if he meant to measure their puny might against his. They seemed to be staring at the dark, but their eyes were watching God. As soon as Tea Cake went out pushing wind in front of him, he saw that the wind and water had given life to lots of things that folks think of as dead and given death to so much that had been living things water everywhere stray fish swimming in the yard three inches more and the water would be in the house already in some he decided to try to find a car to take them out of the glades before worse things happened he turned back to tell Janie about it so she could be ready to go get our insurance papers together Janie I'll tote my box myself and things like that you got all the money out the dresser drawer already no, nah, get it quick and cut a piece off the tablecloth to wrap it up in. Us liable to get wet to our necks. Cut a piece of that oil cloth quick for our papers. We got to go if it ain't too late. The dish can't bear it out no longer. He snatched the oil cloth off the table and took out his knife. Janie held it straight while he slashed off a strip. But tea cake, it's too awful out there. Maybe it's better to stay here in the wet than it is to try to... He stunned the argument with half a word. Fix, he said, and fought his way outside. He had seen more than Janie had. Janie took a big needle and ran up a longish sack, found some newspaper and wrapped up the paper money and papers and thrust them in and whipped over the open end with her needle. Before she could get it thoroughly hidden in the pocket of her overalls, tea cake burst in again. Tain no cars, Janie. I thought not. What are we going to do now? We got to walk. In all this weather tea cake, I don't believe I could make it out the quarters. Oh yeah, you can. Me and you, a motorboat, can all lock arms and hold one another down, eh, motor? He's asleep on the bed in yonder, Janie said. TK called without moving. Motorboat, you better get up from there. Held on, broke loose in Georgie, this minute. How can you sleep at a time like this? Water knee deep in the yard. They stepped out in water almost to their buttocks and managed to turn east. Tea Cake had to throw his box away, and Janie saw how it hurt him. Dodging flying missiles, floating dangers, avoiding stepping in holes and warmed on the wind now at their backs until they gained comparatively dry land. They had to fight to keep from being pushed the wrong way and to hold together. They saw other people like themselves struggling along, a house down here and there, frightened cattle but above all the drive of the wind and the water and the lake under its multiplied roar could be heard a mighty sound of grinding rock and timber and a wail they look back saw people trying to run in raging waters and screaming when they found they couldn't a huge barrier of the makings of the dike to which the cabins had been added was rolling and tumbling forward ten feet higher and as far as they could see, the muttering wall advanced before the braced up waters like a road crusher on a cosmic scale. The monstropolis beast had left his bed. The 200 miles an hour wind had loosed his chains. 
he seized hold of his dikes and ran forward until he met the quarters, uprooted them like grass, and rushed on after his supposed to be conquerors, rolling the dikes, rolling the houses, rolling the people in the houses along with other timbers. The sea was walking the earth with a heavy heel. The lake is coming, TK gasped. The lake? In amazed horror from Motobo. The lake! It's coming behind us, Janie shuddered. Oh, scare fly! But we still can run, TK shouted, and they ran. The gushing water ran faster. The great body was held back, but rivers spouted through fissures in the rolling wall and broke like day. The three fugitives ran past another line of shanties that topped a slight rise and gained a little. They cried out as best they could, The lake is coming! And barred doors flew open and others joined them in flight, crying the same as they went, The lake is coming! And the pursuing waters growled and shouted ahead, Yes, I'm coming! And those who could fled on. They made it to a tall house on a hump of ground, and Janie said, Let's stop here. Can't make it no further. I'm done. Give out. All of us is done. Give out, TK corrected. We's going inside out this weather. Kill our cure. He knocked with the handle of his knife, while they leaned their faces and shoulders against the wall. He knocked once more. Then he and Motorboat went around the back and forced a door. Nobody there. These people had more sense than I did, TK said, as they dropped to the floor and lay there panting. Us ought to went on with lies like he asked me. You didn't know, Janie contended. And when you don't know, you just don't know. The storms might not have come sure enough. They went to sleep promptly. But Janie woke up first. She heard the sound of rushing water and sat up. Tea cake, motorboat, the lake is coming. The lake was coming on. Slower and wider, but coming. It had trampled on most of its supporting wall and lowered its front by spreading. But it came, muttering and grumbling onward like a tired mammoth, just the same. This is a high, tall house. Maybe it won't reach here at all, Janie counseled. And if it do, maybe it won't reach to the upstairs part. Janie, Lake Okeechobee is 40 miles wide and 60 miles long. That's a whole heap of water. If this wind is shoving that whole lake this away, this house ain't nothing to swallow. Us better go. Motorboat. What you want, man? The lake is coming. Ah, oh, no, it ain't. Yes, it is so coming. Listen, you can hear it way off. It can just come on. I'll wait right here. Oh, get up, motorboat. Let's make it to the Palm Beach Road. That's on a fill. We's pretty safe there. I'm safe here, man. Go ahead if you want to. I'm sleepy. What you going to do if the lake reach here? Go upstairs. Supposing it come up there. Swim, man, that's all. Well, uh, goodbye, motorboat. Everything is pretty bad, you know. Us might get missed off one another. Your show is a grand friend for a man to have. Goodbye, tea cake. Y'all ought to stay here and sleep, man. No use in going off and leaving me like this. We don't want to. Come on with us. It might be night time when the water hem you up in here. That's how come I won't stay. Come on, man. Tea cake. I got to have my sleep, definitely. Goodbye then, motor. I wish you all the luck. Going over to Nassau for that visit with you when all this is over. Definitely, tea cake. My mama's house is yours. Tea cake and Janie were some distance from the house before they struck serious water. Then they had to swim a distance, and Janie could not hold up more than a few strokes at a time. So tea cake bore her up till finally they hit a ridge that led on towards the fill. It seemed to him the wind was weakening a little, so he kept looking for a place to rest and catch his breath. His wind was gone. Janie was tired and limping, but she had not had to do that hard swimming in the turbulent waters, so tea cake was much worse off. But they couldn't stop. Gaining the fill was something, but it was no guarantee. The lake was coming. They had to reach the Six Mile Bridge. It was high and safe, perhaps. Everybody was walking the fill. Hurrying, dragging, falling, crying, calling out names, hopefully and hopelessly. Wind and rain beating on old folks and beating on babies. Tea Cake stumbled once or twice in his weariness and Janie held him up. So they reached the bridge at Six Mile Bend and thought to rest but it was crowded. White people had preempted that point of elevation and there was no more room. 
They could climb up one of its high sides and down the other. That was all. Miles further on, still no rest. They passed a dead man in a sitting position on a hummock, entirely surrounded by wild animals and snakes. Common danger made common friends. Nothing sought a conquest over the other. Another man clung to a cypress tree on a tiny island. A tin roof of a building hung from the branches by electric wires, and the wind swung it back and forth like a mighty axe. The man dared not move a step to his right, lest his crushing blade split him open. He dared not step left, for a large rattlesnake was stretched full length with his head in the wind. There was a strip of water between the island and the fill, and the man clung to the tree and cried for help. The snake won't bite you, tea cake yelled to him. He's scared to go into a coil. Scared he'll be blown away. Step round that side and swim off. Soon after that, tea cake felt he couldn't walk anymore. Not right away. So he stretched alongside of the road to rest. Janie spread herself between him and the wind, and he closed his eyes and let the tiredness seep out of his limbs. On each side of the field was a great expanse of water like lakes. Water full of things living and dead. Things that didn't belong in water. As far as the eye could reach, water and wind playing upon it in fury. A large piece of tar paper roofing sailed through the air and scudded along the fill until it hung against a tree. Janie saw it with joy. That was the very thing to cover tea cake with. She could lean against it and hold it down. The wind wasn't quite so bad as it was anyway. The very thing. Poor tea cake. She crept on hands and knees to the piece of roofing and caught hold of it by either side. Immediately the wind lifted both of them and she saw herself sailing off the field to the right, out and out over the lashing water. She screamed terribly and released the roofing which sailed away as she plunged downward into the water. Tea cake! He heard her and sprang up. Janie was trying to swim but fighting water too hard. He saw a cow swimming slowly towards the field in an oblique line. A massive built dog was sitting on her shoulders and shivering and growling. The cow was approaching Janie. A few strokes would bring her there. Make it to the cow and grab hold of her tail. Don't use your feet, just your hands is enough. That's right, come on. Janie achieved the tail of the cow and lifted her head up along the cow's rump as far as she could above water. The cow sunk a little with the added load and thrashed a moment in terror thought she was being pulled on by a gator. Then she continued on. The dog stood up and growled like a lion, stiff standing hackles, stiff muscles, teeth uncovered as he lashed up his fury for the charge. Tea cake split the water like an otter, opening his knife as he dived. The dog raced on the backbone of the cow to the attack, and Janie screamed and slipped far back on the tail of the cow, just out of reach of the dog's angry jaws. He wanted to plunge in after her, but dreaded the water somehow. Tea cake rose out of the water at the cow's rump and seized the dog by the neck. But he was a powerful dog and tea cake was overtired. So he didn't kill the dog with one stroke as he had intended. But the dog couldn't free himself either. They fought and somehow he managed to bite tea cake high up on his cheekbone once. Then tea cake finished him and sent him to the bottom to stay there. The cow Relieved of a great weight, was landing on the field with Janie before tea cake stroked in and crawled weakly upon the field again. Janie began to fuss around his face where the dog had bitten him, but he said it didn't amount to anything. He'd have raised hell though if he had grabbed me an inch higher and bit me in my eye. You can't buy eyes in the store, you know. He flopped to the edge of the field as if the storm wasn't going on at all. Let me rest a while. Then us got to make it on into town somehow. It was next day by the sun and the clock when they reached Palm Beach. It was years later by their bodies. Winters and winters of hardship and suffering. The wheel kept turning round and round. Hope, hopelessness and despair. But the storm blew itself out as they approached the city of refuge. Havoc was there with her mouth wide open. Back in the Everglades, the wind had romped among lakes and trees. In the city, it had raged among houses and men. Tea Cake and Janie stood on the edge of things and looked over the desolation. How can I find a doctor for your face in all this mess? Janie wailed. 
Ain't got the damn doctor to study about. Us needs a place to rest. A great deal of their money and perseverance, and they found a place to sleep. It was just that. No place to live at all. Just sleep. Tea Cake looked all around and sat heavily on the side of the bed. Well, he said humbly, reckon you never expected to come to this when you took up with me, did you? Once upon a time, I never expected nothing, Tea Cake, but being dead from the standing still and trying to laugh. But you come along and made something out of me. So I'm thankful for anything we come through together. Thank you, ma'am. You was twice noble to save me from that dog. Tea cake. I don't speck you see in his eyes like I did. He didn't aim to just bite me, tea cake. He aimed to kill me stone dead. I'm never to forget them eyes. He was nothing all over but pure hate. Wonder where he come from. Yeah, I did see him too. It was frightening. I didn't mean to take his hate neither. He had to die on me one. My switchblade said it was him. Poor me. He'd have tore me to pieces if it wasn't for you, honey. You don't have to say if it wasn't for me, baby, because I'm here. And then I want you to know it's a man here. So that was chapter 18. This was a pretty long chapter, but I really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. I hope you join me for the next video where we'll be reading chapter 19. So until then, happy reading. Bye.